The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. All right, guys. So um, I want to talk about uh, this story that just broke a little while ago that came out out of a Texas courtroom. I knew when this came out and when this when this went mainstream, I knew that this was going to be the topic we're going to have to talk about tonight. I couldn't help but to talk about this. So um, again, if, if you're just joining us for the broadcast, again, I'm Ricky Scaparro, the founder, the voice, and the pastor of End Time Headlines and Remnant Revival Ministries. Uh, we want to welcome you to the broadcast. We want to welcome all of our podcasters, our YouTubers, and our Facebook livers. Uh, if this is your for- first time joining us, please let us know in the comments section, or you can email us at endtimeheadlines at yahoo.com. Um, however you're watching this and whatever uh, stream that you're watching this on, we just welcome you and we welcome all of our first timers joining us. So tonight, I'm going to talk about the demonstration of Jesus in a Texas courtroom. Uh, here's the story, guys. Here's the backdrop. Former Dallas police officer Amber <clears throat> Geiger was sentenced on Wednesday to serve 10 years in prison for the fatal 2018 killing of an of an innocent man that she shot when she mistakenly entered into his apartment believing it was her own. Uh, most of you guys know this story already, especially all my, I know Shirley's on here, I know Jessica's on here, you guys are Texans, and I know you, you're very familiar with this story, and everybody else from Texas, but most people has been, a lot of people has been following this story, but this uh, former Dallas police officer, police officer Amber uh, Geiger, uh, in 2018, uh, entered into an apartment uh, that she thought her was her own apartment, again, by her own testimony. Um, there was a, a black man there. Um, he was a, from what I understand, he was a, a, a man of God. He was a pastor. Uh, and he was, she pulled out her firearm and shot him, believing that he had broken into her own apartment. Really bizarre story. Um, and as a result of this, they sentenced her to 10 years in prison. Um, and today, I don't know if you saw this story, uh, but today she was sentenced to 10 years in prison over this. But I'm just going to read this to you. In a remarkable, a quote, this is from ABC News, in a remarkable act of kindness, the brother of the victim took to the witness stand Um, this is Brant Jean. This is the younger brother of the pastor, uh, or the man who was gunned down. Uh, he took to the, um, to the stand and he spoke directly to Amber, this former police officer. And he said, quote, I love you like anyone else. I want you to think about the dynamics of this. Here is a man who his brother was shot dead by accident. Look, I don't want to get, y'all can say, I don't want to get into whole dynamics of that, whether it was or it wasn't, it was intentional, it was racism. Look, if you're, if we focus on that, you're missing what I'm trying to talk about tonight. The point is, here is a man who lost his brother that was gunned down. He takes to the stand, he looks at the individual who shot and killed his brother and said, I quote, I love you like anyone else. And he went on to say, let me pull up a different source. Addressing Amber Geiger in the courtroom Wednesday after the jury sentenced her to a decade behind bars, Botham Jean, the, uh, said he, th- said he believes that his brother uh, I'm sorry, Brant Jean said that he believes that his brother, Botham, who was gone, gunned down, would want this police officer, to, police officer to give her life to Christ. Now think about that. He said, quote, I love you as a person. I don't wish any bad on you. He then said, quote, I don't know if this is possible, but can I give her a hug? He looks at the judge who, by the way, it brought the judge to tears. 
brings the judge to tears and says, I don't know if this is possible, but can I give her a hug? The judge said he could. He steps down from the podium, the stand. He steps down from the stand. Uh, we got the video of this on intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. You can see this. He steps down. He, he embraces her in front of the courtroom. The police officer begins to sob. Geiger's sentence was met with boos and, and jeers by a crowd gathered outside the courtroom. Um, while, here's what's interesting. While there's threats of violence and rioting and all kinds of stuff on the outside of the courtroom, there's a demonstration of forgiveness and love from Christ emanating from a young man who just lost his brother through being shot down. When I read this, I couldn't help but to remember a story. I want to ask you, this is a challenging story. Remember what Jesus said. He said, by this you'll know, by all men will know you're my disciples, for the love that you have for one another. Now that does not mean the love that we have for another brother or another sister, although we should love our brothers and we should love our sisters and we should love everybody. But what about the love that we demonstrate towards our enemies, our adversaries, those who do us wrong? This is the true agape love. And my friends, say what you will about this story, say what you will about this trial, say, you, say what you will about the outcome of this, but I'm telling you, with all that aside, this young man demonstrated the agape love of Christ today in a Texas courtroom. John 13, here's what John 13 says. This is phenomenal. I want to show you how Jesus demonstrated love towards a man whom he already knew who was going to portray him. I want you to think about this. Here's a man who already, Jesus already knew that Judas was going to betray him. Here's all of his disciples. They're here at the table. And Jesus knew ahead of time that one of these guys was going to stab him in the back. They were going to betray him. At, at a table, come on, where they would be eating and drinking. Listen to this, John 13. And supper being ended, the devil having already been, been put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. <clears throat> Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from the supper table, or rose from supper, rather, and laid, laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded about. And guess who was there among the disciples in which also Jesus wiped his feet and, 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 uh, and wiped them with the towel? Judas the very one who would betray him, who would sell him out. Come on. But look at the demonstration of love. Then he came to Peter and Peter said, Lord, are you washing my feet? And, and Jesus answered, said, what I'm doing, you don't, understand, you don't understand now, but you will know after this. And Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, said, if I do not wash you, you will have no part with me. And Peter quickly changed his tone and said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean and you are clean, but not all of you. Again, acknowledging the one who would betray him. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. 
So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I've done to you? Question mark. You call me teacher and Lord and you say, well, for so I am. If then your Lord and teacher has washed your feet, you listen to this guys, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Listen, I don't know about you. I may be speaking on my own terms here, but I'm not, listen, I've been serving the Lord for 19 years, but even 19, it's not been any time recently, but I remember years ago, we'd have feet, feet washing services. We'd have good old, old time foot washing service. And I'm telling you, friends, it would be in the middle of a revival service and the spirit of God would speak to uh, the evangelist or the revivalist that was coming there and in town and spontaneously he would tell the deacons or he'd tell the elders, go and get me some buckets, go and get me something that can hold water and fill it up with water and bring me some towels. And they knew exactly what was happening. And I'm going to tell you, some people got up and left. Now, why did they do that? Let me tell you why people don't like foot washing services. On the natural, we could say, well, I don't want to see anybody's funky toes or their bunions or their corns or their nasty feet. I get it. I don't like feet, period. It's nasty. I don't want to see your feet. I don't care who you are. It's nasty. It's disgusting. I don't want to see it. But listen to me. That's the natural angle of this. But I'm going to tell you something. If you want to break the spirit of pride off of your congregation and you want to see unforgiveness be broken off of people, and you want to see a spirit of forgiveness and humility open up in that place, you bring out an old-time, old-fashioned foot-washing service, and I'm going to tell you something. It'll start breaking people off. You'll see people start confessing sins. You'll see, you'll, you'll see people start hugging and making up. You'll see people start burying the hatchet that they've held for years. The grudges that's been held for years. Unforgiveness and bitterness will begin to break off people. Why? Because it, because Jesus set this in motion. Listen to what he says. You didn't think I was going to get into a foot washing uh, preaching uh, coming from a, 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 a title of when Jesus shows up in a Dallas courtroom, did you? But I'm pulling this all together. D listen, Jesus said, you, he said, if I'm your Lord and teacher and I've washed your feet, including the one that was going to betray him, that was going to sell out the Son of Man, the one in whom it said it had been better for him not to be born than for him to betray the Son of Man. He says, if I, your Lord, do this, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Well, listen to this, verse 15. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Don't miss the point of what I'm trying to tell you here in this little passage of scripture tonight. Nobody got their feet washed tonight in a Texas courtroom. No, but listen to me. There was a demonstration of the love of Jesus. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. That man could have said, my brother would have wanted you to know Jesus and he could have left it there. And that woman probably would have never remembered a thing that, boy, that guy had to say because she was thinking about prison. She was thinking about the sentence there. She was thinking about how long she was going to be in jail or in prison. She was going to think about all the dangers that she could be confronted with while she's there in prison, how long she's actually going to be in prison and how she, you know, her life as she knows it's ruined because of this is going to be on a record. All this stuff's going through her head. And this man says from the stand, my brother would have wanted you to know Christ but listen that would have been echoed out and would have probably fell come on like a lead balloon but when he got up when he stood up on the stand and he stood down and he looked the very person in the eyes who took the life of his own flesh and blood brother 
that he'll never see again on this side of heaven. And he looked at her in the eyes and with that hesitation, embraced her and hugged on her. Friends, this is why she was broken and was wailing. You can, listen, you can play all these games you want on this. But I'm speaking to your spirit man tonight, not your carnal man. People want to riot in the streets and, and cause all kinds of lawlessness. But inside the courtroom, the demonstration of the love of Jesus was displayed. Friends, she will be in that. I'm telling you, she'll be in that prison for I don't know how many years. But I'm going to tell you that act of demonstration right there that that young man performed in that courtroom is a massive seed that was planted in her heart. And don't matter who comes to her in that prison cell and says, I don't believe in Jesus. He's a fairy tale. He's a fake. He's a phony. There's no such thing as God. She can be funded with atheists. She can say, listen, I don't know. But all I know is I experienced the brother of a man who I gunned down on accident come to me. He could have he could have cussed me. He could have tried to sue me for everything I got. He could have taken me out. He could have thrown the book at me and asked for life in prison. But instead, he gets off of the stand. I didn't deserve his love, but he came to me, embraced me, wrapped his arms around me, and loved me, and showed me the love of Christ. Don't tell me there's not a God when a man who just lost his brother can embrace the murderer who shot him in cold blood, whether it be an accident, whether or not, and embrace her and tell her, my brother would have wanted you to know Jesus. <sighs> Listen, I'm telling you, this is one of them, this is one of them times where your actions will preach louder than your words. And we saw that today in Texas. I, I applaud this man. I am so moved by this. This is absolutely one of the most powerful things you'll see probably all day long. All you see on the news is negative, 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 negative. Well, here's a positive, good, feel good, powerful story. No, it's not a good story that he lost his brother. No, it's not a feel good story that he lost his brother. But I'm telling you, the act and demonstration of kindness and forgiveness is on full display. Friends, whether you want to give up on humanity or not, I'm telling you, there's still a remnant in the earth today. Jesus is still working through people. And Jesus, who was our ultimate example, already knew, already knew that a man was going to portray him. Knowing this, got up from a table with water and a towel and began to wash the betrayer's feet and loved him equally as he did Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, Matthew, all the rest of the disciples. Think about that. Let that soak in. So I, I wanted to, again, this wasn't going to be a long message tonight, but this forgiveness thing, guys, has been really coming up a lot. And again, it's not a coincidence that here we are, we're still in this 40-day window of Teshuvah, which is again, uh, again, the word Teshuvah means to turn back, uh, to repent, to come back to God. And we're seeing these acts and demonstrations of forgiveness and releasing people. So I don't know who this was for tonight. Uh, maybe this has stirred you up. Maybe the tears are flowing right now because listen, You've been holding a grudge against somebody. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a brother, a sister, an uncle, a nephew, a niece, a cousin, a, a father. Uh, maybe it's your uh, husband, your wife, a neighbor, a co-worker, whatever it is. You've been holding a pastor, somebody in the church for good heavens. You've been holding a grudge and won't even pick up a phone and call them. You won't go to the same church as them. You won't Facebook message them. You won't text them. You won't go to the store with any proximity of them because you've been holding a grudge. You've been holding unforgiveness against them. And here tonight is a man who lost his own brother who was willing to embrace 
the very one who took his brother's life and forgave her openly in demonstration before everybody. And it's making airways across the world. How dare us? How dare us have so much pride that we are not willing to forgive somebody for far worse less, for far less. I don't know who this is to tonight, but I'm telling you it's for somebody tonight. So right now, before we close, let me give you some information, then we're going to pray for you guys. Again, this is endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. You can find us. Uh, at our, those are our main website destinations. E either one of them is going to bring you to the same location. Facebook Live, you want to click on the link right there. You can more about subscribing to our, our daily digest. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, a, uh, there's a link there that you can support our ministry if it's a blessing to you, an encouragement, whatever the case may be throughout the week. You guys watching by uh, YouTube, all that information's there as well. You guys on podcast, all that information's coming after this. Uh, real quick before we sign out and before we pray for somebody today, uh, we are going to be in Louisville, Kentucky tomorrow night. Um, we're going to be uh, there at Churchman's Chapel Ministries there in Louisville, Kentucky. We're going to be ministering tomorrow uh, about 11 and a half hours from now, about 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm excited to come and bring the word tomorrow night there in Louisville, Kentucky. And we're coming back to the same church on Sunday morning as well. So, all right. So hopefully we'll get to see a couple of you guys or a few of you, a handful of you guys there in Louisville. If you're within somewhere within driving distance, and we'd love for you to come out and be a part of that. Um, it's a, it's a small church. It's not a big church. It's, uh, um, so, but anyway, uh, we're looking forward to that tomorrow night. So here's what I want to do. Whoever's watching this tonight and you feel like th this has just penetrated your heart. It's touched you. It touched your spirit. And maybe there's tears falling down your face right now. Your eyes are filled with tears. Your heart is just racing because of the, the compassion that this man has has moved you to repentance, has moved you to the point where you want to release somebody, you want to forgive somebody. I want to give you that opportunity to do that right now. And you say, well, how do I do that? It's simple. You just begin to call out their name before the Lord. And you just say, Father, I forgive so-and-so and just name them by name. I forgive them for what they did. They said things wrong against me. They did things wrong against me. They stabbed me in the back. They betrayed me. They left me. They abandoned me. They turned against me. They lied on me. They made up a bunch of stuff about me that wasn't true. They ripped me off. Guys, I understand. I can relate to a lot of these things. If they've done any of these things to you, don't hold on to that unforgiveness. Don't hold on to grudges. Release them. Forgive them right now. Do it by faith. What do you mean do it by faith? Just confess it with your mouth and begin to walk by faith. Some of this takes time, guys. Nobody's expecting this to happen. It's not going to happen instantaneous, instantaneously. But I'm going to tell you, man, that guy that we're talking about tonight, this brother, I'm going to tell you right now that he's in the word. He's in the presence of God because nobody can demonstrate that kind of love if they don't have a strong relationship with Christ. It ain't going to happen. So some of y'all can't forgive somebody because your walk with God is shallow. Because the deeper you get with him, the more of him you will demonstrate. My gosh. I said the deeper you get with him, the more of him that you will demonstrate. No greater love than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Who in the world could say they can do that? A man who sold out to Jesus. A man who has surrendered it all to him. The closer I get to him, the more like him I become. And when I begin to read this word, I can begin to demonstrate Christ like attributes. So I hope, again, I don't know who this was for tonight, but I believe it was for somebody. This was a powerful demonstration of the love of God being demonstrated in a Texas courtroom. And this is one of them stories I could not, um, I couldn't let it go. I couldn't pass it up. So again, we thank you and we appreciate you for coming on to this broadcast tonight. We're going to be signing off tonight. Tonight, uh, listen, we will be in Louisville, Kentucky live tomorrow at 7 p.m. I do not know if it's going to be broadcast live. I, I wish I could tell you, but I don't know. Um, and then 
Uh, we will be back there on Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Um, I don't know for sure. I cannot tell you for sure if I'll be on here on Friday or not. We'll try to, but I can't make no promises. Depends on how the week goes. Um, and then if not, then we will be back on here next week on Monday. So I'll see some of you guys uh, tomorrow and Sunday. And I, we may be back on here on Friday. But nevertheless, we love you guys. God bless you again. Thank you for your prayers and your support of End Time Headlines. God bless. We hope Have that today's word was a source of blessing and encouragement to you and your family. End Time Headlines is a ministry that provides weekly teachings to equip believers and inform the discerning of the signs and seasons in which we are in. If you would like to help support this ministry with a gift of any amount, you can do so electronically by visiting our website at endtimeheadlines.org, where you can sow a one-time gift or set up monthly partnership. If you would like to give by check or money order, you can do so by writing to End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 2312, Clarksville, Indiana, 47131. Thank you for your generous support and partnership to End Time Headlines.